A young Chinese woman known as Xuanzi is considered by some international media as a symbol of the Me Too movement in China. In July 2018, Xuanzi, a former intern at China State Broadcaster CCTV, publicly accused a nationally renowned host on her social media page on Weibo of sexually harassing her and forcibly kissing her in the dressing room in 2014. On September 14, 2021, a court in Beijing dismissed her case for lack of evidence. A court statement was issued on the same evening claiming the evidence was insufficient to prove her allegations. However, it did not specify what evidence the court considered. The trial lasted about 10 hours and was not held in open court. <laughs> We will definitely appeal because in this case, none of the core facts were examined. That is all of the surveillance videos, my journals, and my dress. They didn't ask to look at any of this, so none of the core facts were examined. And also, Zhu Jun himself did not appear in court to give an account. Also, the judge didn't ask me any questions both today and at the last trial in December 2020. None of the judges asked me any questions. When Xuan Zhe was speaking to the media, unidentified men and women came forward and tried to push her away. Police also quickly surrounded a woman who tried to hold up a sign stating, Unite, and the sign was consequently snatched away. I think there's nothing more I can do. Also, I think that the last three years, from 2018 to now, there are three years of my life. I can't go through all that again. I can't possibly cope with three more years like that. When this incident happened, I was only 21 years old, but now I'm already 28. If I carry on for another three years, then I will be nearly 32, and then after that, 35. I think about the age. I just feel so exhausted. I think for the past three years, speaking to everyone on Weibo, I've really put my heart and soul, everything into this. On July 26, 2018, the girl who goes by the handle Xuanzi posted an article on Weibo describing the incident in which a former CCTV host sexually harassed her in 2014. In the article, she said that she had called the police on June 10, 2014, accompanied by her teacher and friends. The police opened a case and took evidence. However, they then pressured her to drop the charges on the grounds that the accused was a nationally known figure. The incident was then dropped. The topic immediately surfaced on Weibo that day. However, soon after, Weibo began to delete posts urgently and the topic was taken down. Later, the girl was met with significant online violence. So, in 2020, she wrote another long post describing the incident and clarifying some details. Her post reads that when she called her relatives, classmates and friends, they all told me to hold my tongue. Finally, I found one college teacher. She was the first person who told me to call the police. She accompanied me to the police later and also protected me from retaliation at school. The accused host denied the allegation and sued the girl instead for 655,000 RMB, or roughly 100,000 US dollars, for reputation damages. During the process, Beijing police went to the girl's parents, who reside in the city of Wuhan, to intimidate them and ask them to sign a non disclosure guarantee. The police's handling of the case raised questions and anger among the public. They supported the girl's countersuit. 
Hence, Xuanzu took it to the court, demanding a public apology and claiming 50,000 RMB or close to 8,000 US dollars in damages. After the court hearing on September 14th, Xuanzu posted an article in her circle of friends to reveal the whole trial process, disclosing the resistance she met, such as a request to access the surveillance video at the CCTV building and DNA extraction of the dress she wore when being sexually harassed, all of which were rejected by the court. Before the trial, sensing the mounting pressure, even her supporters did not think a winning chance was likely. So women are still being hunted down, are still prey. Uh, the women's rights has not been as well established in China as, um, as in Western countries. So uh, I guess in a sense the majority of the societies is against us and we need to change that. We need to uh, bring, bring feminism to everybody because it's the 2020s now. Lastly, I want to say it doesn't matter whether this journey has been smooth or painful. I'm very honored that you're all here and have been with me. On September 14th, after the court trial, many accounts on social media in China, such as Weibo and WeChat, have been suspended or shut down for voicing support for the girl or for simply forwarding information about the case. The accused, Zhu Jin, was a prominent host at the state broadcaster and a member of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, a central part of the CCP's united front system. During the CCP's two sessions in 2010, he was interviewed by the media about the problem of college students working as septic workers, that is, the challenge for college students to find jobs that match their majors. Zhu replied that college students working in septic work may change the status quo of septic work in China because they have advantages in both thinkings and using septic tools. He said, this will free China from the traditional sense of septic work. Although we denied the girl's accusation on various occasions, his career ended quickly as a result. Before 2018, he hosted a total of 12 Spring Festival galas, the most prominent program on CCTV. However, after 2018, he is no longer seen at the annual gala and has almost disappeared from the public eye. Online photos have shown him aging fast, a far cry from his previous on-screen persona. CCTV sits at the top of the hierarchical pyramid of China's official media. The reputation of Chinese media is not determined by the media's credibility, but by its administrative rank. Outside of the central authority of the government, CCTV is virtually unchecked in China. In general, local government officials have to cater to it. When the CCTV reports negatively on their jurisdictions, they have to bow down and beg for mercy. Therefore, prominent reporters and hosts working for CCTV become figures of power and influence in China to a certain extent. People who sympathize with a girl would rather believe in the authenticity of her claim to a greater extent because of the many previous scandals that have broken out concerning the national broadcaster. For example, consider the case of a former anchor of News Simulcast, a daily news program at CCTV, shown simultaneously by all local TV stations in mainland China, making it one of the world's most watched programs. Its former anchor was sued in court by a female doctor for an even worse sex scandal and demanded compensation. After that, the prominent host virtually disappeared from the public eye. Another CCTV host, for example, has been under investigation by the authorities since July 11, 2014, and has since seized his hosting activities. Several Chinese media outlets in China and abroad describe him as a public husband, claiming that his mistresses are composed of a platoon of wives of senior Communist Party officials at or above the vice ministerial level. All of these wives are 20 to 30 years older than him. As for the female hosts of CCTV, it has been reported that they have pretty much been enlisted as mistresses by various CCP senior officials. 
During the CCP's anti-corruption campaign, if a hostess suddenly disappears from the screen, the public will speculate that it is because the man behind her may have been arrested. According to one blogger who used to work for CCTV as a reporter on economics, her husband was so worried that she would be tainted and stuck in her work that she eventually quit the job. She wrote, the metamorphosis of a woman, which is not only the process of losing her commitment to the media business, but also the process of losing the China dream. While working at CCTV, I met too many unscrupulous men and saw too many cruel realities. There were only two options for women at such a time, to lose one's bottom line or to quit fast. Does the loss of this trial mean that the CCP is suppressing feminism? We believe such a conclusion would be too broad. During the Mao Zedong era, Chinese women were given the role of being able to hold up half the sky. During China's political movements of the Great Leap Forward and going up to the mountains and down to the countryside, women were called upon to perform the same physical labor as men. In September 1955, the CCP Central Office published a book titled The Climax of Socialism in Rural China. Mao Zedong wrote its preface, Chinese women are a great human resource. This resource must be tapped and fought for in order to build a great socialist country. To mobilize women in labor, the principle of equal pay for equal work between men and women must be implemented. Feminist books have been allowed in China and have become a source of pop culture. Women athletes are particularly outstanding in this regard. A buzzword is coined in China, qi guang yun, or henpecked husbands, which also happens to be a homonym for bronchitis in Chinese. Such culture is different from the traditional Chinese culture, which advocates women to be gentle, kind, respectful, and frugal. Many Chinese women who are raised in the party culture tend to be dominant in the family. In other words, the CCP doesn't object to feminism. What happened in Xuanzhou's case might just be one of the many injustices that have been perpetrated under the CCP's governance. <laughs> Thank you.